Welcome to Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. I'm Megan Payton. We've got a week five preview for you guys, but we want to thank our presenting sponsors over at BetQL. Guys, it's time to stop losing your bets. If you want to beat your sports book, go check out chatsports.com slash SteelersQL. You've got to use promo code chat Steelers. We're going to tell you all about this later on, but let's get into this week five matchup for the Steelers. They are taking on the Denver Broncos. Pittsburgh is at home, which is a positive. And right now the Steelers are favorites at minus one over under set at 39 and a half. So potentially a low scoring game and an obvious important win for Pittsburgh. I mean, we said it last week. We're going to keep saying this. All of these games are must wins right now. It's a bad situation in Pittsburgh and going one and four would just be really, really tough. We've talked about the competitiveness of the AFC North. I really think this game has to be a win in order for Pittsburgh to keep up the hope. I mean, we're not even talking playoffs right now, but we're just talking about a winning season there. They have a hard schedule coming up. So I'm hoping that the Steelers find a way to come up on top. And a lot of that, in my opinion, is going to have to do with whether or not Broncos quarterback Teddy Bridgewater is playing. He went out last week with a concussion. Right now, his status is still unknown. He did not practice on Wednesday. I'm hearing that he could be a limited participant on Thursday. We're not sure, but to me, this is going to be just the obvious deciding factor. I'm not saying that the Steelers can't win if Teddy's in, but it'll obviously be a bit easier if Drew Locke is in at backup. Uh, Locke came in and took over for Bridgewater last week against the Ravens. He put up 113 yards. He had an interception and his completion percentage was like 57.1. So it's obviously an easier matchup if the Steelers do get to go up against Drew Locke, not to hate on Locke, but he is the weaker quarterback out of the two. We'll keep you guys updated on Bridgewater's injury. But before we get into what I think are the keys to victory for the Steelers to win, I want you guys to go to the comments right now. Predict the score for the Steelers versus the Broncos. This is our pinned comment. I want you guys to get your scores in because we're going to go through all of them, especially after Sunday. I'm going to see, hey, did any of you guys get close? Did anyone call the score? Get them in right now, and I'll give you my score prediction at the end of this video. First thing that the Steelers need to do, it's the very obvious one, but we can't do this video without talking about it. We need to see improvement from Big Ben. We at least need to see some improvement. This is a must if Pittsburgh does want to win. And I'm not saying, oh my gosh, we need a completely different quarterback in. Well, it would be nice to have a different quarterback in, but I'm not saying we need a dominant performance by Big Ben, but we just need some improvement to stand a chance. And, you know, Big Ben's acknowledged this too. In a press conference earlier this week, he said, I know that I can play better football. I believe in myself. I know that no matter what is going on, I'm going to fight my butt off to get a win. And if that's the way I need a lead right now, by showing these guys that I'm going to do everything I can to win a football game, then I'll keep doing that. So Ben Roethlisberger, he knows what's going on. He understands that he's not playing at the level that he needs to be at. He's already had four interceptions this season. He's put up 1,033 yards, which is a lot, and that's why sometimes stats can be misleading. He has a 64.1 completion percentage, but ultimately we talk about it all the time. We need to see more out of him, and we talked about whether or not they were going to bench him. Well, Mike Tomlin has made it pretty clear that he is trusting in Big Ben. He said, without a doubt, absolutely, Big Ben is the guy for the team. So, hey, what I think is we need some mental improvement from Big Ben. We need some accuracy. These are ways that he can improve. We're not going to expect him to just completely change how he's playing. But I think that one of the other things is he needs to trust his offensive line. And I'm not saying he has any reason to trust the offensive line, but they did improve a little bit last week. He was throwing really quick because he was afraid of getting hit, but he didn't have as much pressure on him. So mental pressure and throwing it and taking his time. I think those are going to be keys for Big Ben to just have some sort of improvement. How many yards do you guys think Big Ben is going to have 
against the Broncos. Go to the comments right now. Maybe you think he's going to have a lot of yards. Maybe you think he has so many that you want to bet on it. And maybe you just need some help with betting. And this is where BetQL can help you guys out. They rank their bets on a scale of one star to five stars every week. That's their confidence level. If they're super confident in it, they're going to say it's a five star bet. I'm going to give you guys a little freebie right now. Their five-star bet for this week is tonight's game. It's the Seahawks versus the Rams. They are saying that the Ram, the Seahawks are going to cover the plus two and a half spread. So if you're feeling like betting, maybe take their advice. Either way, they'll go check out chatsports.com slash Steelers QL. Use the promo code chat Steelers. You're going to get 25% off of all of their subscription offerings. Next up for Steelers to come up on top, it's putting a stop to Von Miller, who we know is one of the most dominant guys in the league. He has already had such a great season this year. He's coming off of his injury back in 2020 where he didn't play, but he's had 13 tackles so far, four and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss, and seven quarterback hits. So we know this when you're going up against a guy like him, you've got to be careful. You've got to realize that He's going to come ready to play, and this is going to fall a lot on guys that might not be ready to take on a guy like Von Miller. We need to see some improvement in the O-line. We talk about it all the time, but I see probably Miller being used mostly on the left side, so it's going to come down to most likely Chakuma Korofor if he's back playing. He's got the right tackle position, so he's probably going to have a lot of interaction with Miller, but I could also see... Uh, the Broncos switching Miller's position up a little bit. So all of these guys really need to be prepared. And you know what would be nice is if we could get a little bit of help from the tight ends to just, you know, kind of chip off Von Miller, help out a little bit. To me, that would be important. But he's a hard guy to go up against no matter what, especially for a struggling offensive line that the Steelers have. So hopefully we can see some improvement and some protection on Big Ben. Next up for Pittsburgh to win this game against the Broncos, I say they need to capitalize on receiver injuries. We talk about injuries all the time, and we talk about how much of a problem it can be. Steelers are definitely used to that. And guess what? The Broncos are also dealing with it, too. They are without their star wide receivers, Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler. And this is a problem for them. These are two really dominant people that are not going to be playing in this game. Now, I don't think that Steelers should get too confident and, you know, take away discredit what Cortland Sutton has been able to do. He's already had 18 receptions, 257 yards. He has not had a touchdown yet, but I'd say that this is one of the Broncos' biggest weapons is, is Sutton. So I think that, hey, yes, they're without some of their biggest guys, but you've got to be aware of Sutton and you've got to be away, aware of their tight end Noah Fant. Noah Fant has done well. He's had two touchdowns already, 156 yards. I only see him improving as the year goes on, especially if they're going to be without some of their top receivers. I think they'll use the tight end position a little bit more. So these are two key guys for the Steelers to watch out for. And I do think, though, since they are without some of their top receivers, this could be an opportunity for the Steelers to you know, win a turnover battle. We haven't seen many interceptions this year. We've only had one from Terrell Edmonds, so maybe he can help out and get another one in this game. But this is going to be, in my opinion, a defensive matchup, a low-scoring game. So anytime you can take an advantage, get a turnover, that is going to help your chances out a lot. So my question is, whether it's Bridgewater or Drew Locke, do you think the Steelers are going to pick either of them? If you think yes, you're feeling confident, go to the comments right now, type Y for yes, and if not, type N for no. And I told you about the Seahawks-Rams bet that BetQL is suggesting. They also have a great deal with a sports book, BetMGM. If you go to chatsports.com slash SteelersMGM, you got to create an account, sign up, deposit $10 into your account, make your bet, Maybe it's the Seahawks Rams game. And then 24 hours later, you are going to get a free year of BetQL. This is a perfect match made in heaven. You get free recommendations. I told you guys who you should bet for this tonight's game. Go check out their deal at chatsports.com slash Steelers MGM. Next up, keys to victory. 
This needs to be a big game for TJ Watt. We just said this is going to be a defensive matchup game. So we need to see a dominant performance by him. And I know that's putting a lot of pressure on Watt, but the way that he played against the Packers just didn't look like Watt. And I know you can look at these stats. You can say, hey, he had two sacks. Well, did he? One was tripping Rodgers. One was kind of Rodgers falling, let's be honest. It wasn't anything to ride home about. So I think that it had a lot to do with his health status that he didn't want to talk about. So he's not going to talk about it, but he is going to be playing. So I'm hoping that he recovered a little bit, got a little bit healthier, because this is an important game for him to do well. He needs to provide pressure to the Broncos offense to get some sacks in, get some maybe a forced fumble. Things like that are going to determine the game. Those are also obviously big momentum shifts. So I am expecting TJ Watt to have a pretty big performance in this game. Lastly, this sounds generic, but this is a big one for me. I need to see the Steelers mentally tougher. We talk about the way that they just, they look like they're giving up. They have to stop that. They have to stop giving up. I don't care if the Steelers are down 21 points in the fourth quarter with two minutes remaining, which I hope isn't the case. You do not want to see the give up mentality, heads down, just feeling like I don't want to be here anymore. This doesn't matter. And that starts with leaders. That starts with guys like Big Ben. That starts with TJ Watt, Juju. And it really, it falls on head coach Mike Tomlin. So I don't care what the score is in the fourth quarter. I do not want to see guys giving up. And I hope when the Steelers take on the Broncos this Sunday, we are not seeing any giving up because, hey, maybe they're taking the lead. Right now they are favorites at minus one at home. We're going to keep you guys updated on the latest with Bridgewater's injury, Steelers injuries, everything to come. Right now, though, get, go to the comments. Give me your uh, just predictions. Who do you think is going to win? If you think the Steelers are going to get their first home game win, go to the comments and type PIT. If you're saying, hey, this isn't going to happen, go to the comments and type DEN. I'm going to say Steelers are winning this game. It is time. This is It's going to be a hard game. It's going to be a close game, but I have them winning 17 to 14.